Okay, so we're gonna start. We're gonna start seven point four now. So. Are you recording it? Yeah. Oh. Just remember, I actually can't do the one they pulled off. I got full solo out there. Ah, oh, that's too bad. All right, seven point four reciprocal functions. All right, so reciprocal, if I say reciprocal, what do you guys think of? Opposite. Flipping. Flipping, right? We know like the reciprocal of two thirds would be three over two. And that's what we're doing here. We're going to flip stuff. So like if I had a function. Uh, let's say. <laughs> then the reciprocal of that, you say it's one over f of x. Remember, the reciprocal of two is one over two, right? We can do the same with this stuff. This becomes. I know. I always subtract before. I know the tensor goes one. Okay. It's like. So this is what reciprocal functions are all about. And for this, <coughs> what you guys are doing here, it's always going to be 1 over something. Okay? What's that? Yeah, and I believe it's only linear equations too. Oh, wait, no, there's... It's all right. It's actually... Trust me, this isn't that bad. I see graphs. That's what you said about the last unit. And it wasn't that bad. <laughs> How did our test go exactly? Uh, we'll have a conversation because they might have been a little bad. But uh, that's okay. So, uh, yeah. We all sat here for an hour, not knowing, and we're all crying for an hour. It's uh, funny. I cried for an hour. Let's talk about, let's say we had the function y equals x. Okay? If we were to graph this guy, if we were to lay out a table of values, um, so what I'm saying is the value for x equals the value of y. I, it just helps to see this stuff. So my x, so if I had y value, or my x values were negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, this, they're the same, right? Oh, sorry. They are negative. Oh, they are now. Um, if I was to do now the reciprocal of that, let's say my function was y is 1 over x. Yes. What's that? Wouldn't it be 1 over y? Oh, no, no, no. That's if I. This is just like a formal definition thing. Okay. Don't worry about that. Um, yeah. So now, if I plot these out. Now, this time it will be helpful if I do the y function first. Three. Oh, man. Having struggles? Yeah. Okay. So now, if these are my y values, what's going to happen to my x values? Nothing. They're going to be just one over. It's going to be one over, right? So this guy would be... Positive one, positive three. Now, what's one over zero? Zero. What's anything divided by zero? Zero. Anything divided by zero? Air. It doesn't exist. All right. 
So what do we call something on it? You guys have never learned this before, but there's a special term for a point on a graph that doesn't exist. Yes? Oh, no. no, you're just yawning. Not existing point on a match. This point does not exist. On a graph, that's known as a... Dini? As a what? Dini? Dini, no. <laughs> Words to say in math. Asymptote. What's that? Yeah. That and isosceles. Yeah. Okay. So that's an asymptote. So if we were to graph these functions, I'm going to graph the straight line first. Sketches, very simple sketches. I'm taking my time with the first one so you guys can see everything, but after a while you kind of see how it just works out. This used to be like a whole separate unit in the old math curriculums, but now we've kind of taken it and made it a, a lesson. So they don't get overly complicated. So my first line, right, this guy here I'll draw it in red. It's going to do this. <coughs> oh, that's not even close. Better. I can live with that. Okay, so that's this guy here. How straight is that line? That's really good. Fair in mind. Well done. Don't oh, worry. It's in the same color, too. No. 99 and a half. It's kind of hard to tell. That line is more like an 86. 86? What's your line? All right. So let's go through this part here now. And when what, when, sorry, when y is negative 3. What is my x value? Negative one third. Negative one third, so it's somewhere like here. You don't have to sketch this just yet if you just want to see what I'm doing. It's cool. Uh, when y is negative two, what's my x value? A half. So a half's a little bit bigger than a third, so I'm a little further out. Okay. Now, uh, when x is 1, what's my y value? Oh, I should have done some smaller numbers too now. Well, let's graph what we have and then I'll go back and I'll show you guys a little bit more. Okay, um, we'll come to this asymptote in a second. When y is 1, what's my x value? 1. 1, positive 1, so up here. Um, when x is, or when y is 2, what's my y value? And uh, when x is 1, or when y is 3, what's my x value? 1 third, somewhere a little bit closer. Now, I didn't put enough points down to keep going. Um, let's just look at this graph here for a sec. So I got this kind of line here, right? That's pretty straight. Like that. It's not supposed to be totally straight. Um, what happens if I went with smaller y values? What if I had... Um, 
y equals 1 half. What's my x value going to be? What do I do to the y value? I take the... So, so, so what's the reciprocal of this? x would be 2. So if y is a half, which is here, y is 2. Okay, now what if I had... Let's pick a smaller one. What if I had y equals 1 over 10? What's my x value going to be? 10, right? So it would be out here. 10. 1 over 10 is 0.1, right? So it's really small. My y value is tiny now. And it goes like that. So my y values get smaller and smaller and smaller. And when you take the reciprocal of really, really small numbers, you're going to get really big numbers. So my x values keep growing and growing and growing, while my y values get smaller and smaller. So what that does is my graph does something like this. Okay. And the same thing happens when my x values get closer and closer to zero. What's going to happen to my y values? They're going to get bigger. So if I had y at, let's say I took y at 10, what's my x value for that going to be? 1 over 10. So if I went way over here, it's going to be up here like this. So my graph looks something like that. And it'll do the same thing here. Like I plotted these lines here. And then as um, my x values go this way, or my y values get closer, my x values do this. Life problems. Okay, does that kind of make some sense? A little bit, not a whole lot, but just a little bit. That's what I'm working on. That's what I mean. A little bit of sense. Okay, I can live with a little bit of sense for the first time seeing this. <coughs> yeah, it's weird to think that when one gets smaller, the other one gets bigger. Okay, and when one gets smaller, the other one gets, yeah, or smaller, like this. Now, the weird one that I'm really going to bake your noodle with now is this asymptote thingy. What the heck do you mean something doesn't exist? How can you draw something if it doesn't exist? What does that mean? This is like a huge philosophical question. In math, we simplify it. All we do is we just draw a dotted line like that. And then just like that. <laughs> and I broke the smart bar. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't like my philosophical. Or I can't help, or like just, just too much philosophical. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, I just broke the internet. Uh, with he broke some, the air. With something from nothing. So this here is my asymptote. It's a dotted line. All right, and it, my math teacher gave me this analogy, and for whatever reason, I always remembered it. Um, and it's not like the. And it's just like a fence that nothing can cross, okay? All right, so think of it like the cattle, they're coming towards the fence, and they travel away from it. <laughs> no, they the they cattle, they yeah, they, they, they just destroy it. <laughs> the whole, the whole line is smooth with it. Yeah, so. <laughs> Thanks for putting it in those terms. See, boom. <laughs> I should get like a teacher of a year award for the cows to the fence analogy. All right? For whatever reason, it sticks. I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> This is the basic structure of all linear reciprocal graphs. Yes. Why is that line going right through it? That's the original function. Uh, the reciprocal function is just the black stuff. So then, would there be a line going the other way? Like this way? <coughs> <coughs> well, like here? Yeah. Uh, technically, there is like an asymptote here, but we're not going to worry about this guy. Well, technically. It is there. No. So do they always just like swerve away from zero? They always swerve away from whenever. If you draw out the, what I always tell kids is to draw the original, and wherever it crosses the x-axis, that will be your horizontal asymptote. Your fence. So your like fence. Like we'll get there. All right. What if it's like at three? Like if my axis was here? Yeah. Then my graph would look like this. Yeah. It doesn't matter if the origin is like over there. Right. Are we going to do nonlinear functions? 
The quadratic ones are actually easier. Ooh. All you're doing is sketches. For your sketches, all I want are asymptotes, and I want the basic shapes right. I want the plots for the asymptotes right. So you got to tell me the point that they occur at, which is just your x-intercepts of your original function, and then I just want to sketch. All right, I'm not looking for a lot of technical detail here. Okay. All right. Let's try another example. I'll do this one uh, the way that I find easiest to do, and then you guys can tell me if you like it or not. Um, the 11s last year, some of them really liked it, and then I had like two that hated it, so I just stuck with the majority. Um, so let me know, and I'll try to help you out. Let's grab this guy here. All right, so this is a linear function, right? Y equals mx plus b. Now we know, what's my b value again? Yeah, my y-intercept. Right there, Emery. Perfect, thank you. Did you finish 5.5? Uh, right on. Okay. I'm a little occupied. I'll combine. It's been more than 10 minutes, I know, but they're okay. Um, now my x-intercept. Remember, you take the whole thing, make it equal to zero. Right, and I solve for x, so it's going to be. So now if I was to graph the original, So how is that different? It's not different so far. So far, this is nothing new. Uh, so my y-intercept is up here at 5. And my x-intercept is at negative 5 over 2, which is negative 2 and a half. Right there. So if I was to graph this guy, OP. What the heck is that? Oh, I just up this way. So I connect the intercepts, right? So there's my original graph, right? Right, Eve? Thank you. She gets it. <laughs> Just going with it. Yeah. I appreciate that. Look at that. That's pretty straight. Oh. It's all up there. It's pretty <laughs> Every time we draw lines, we all compare our straight lines. <laughs> Look at that. That's pretty straight. That's not bad. Okay. Except that. Now, to draw the reciprocals. Easy peasy. What happens to my x-intercept? Yes, you uh, got Cow fence. At my fence. Very good. My asymptote. Cow fence. No cows go. Right there. Oh, and I got to label that point. The cow fence. It's negative 5 over 2. Can I label my both cell fence? Nope. That's bonus for me. Your x intercept is always, always, always your vertical axis. Because. At this point, what does y equal? Zero. Zero. Can you have this? Can I put zero into here? Can I solve for zero? No. No. There's no way you can have a zero. Wait, that's your x-intercept? Yeah. So that does not exist. Now, the next easiest part to point to graph would be your y-intercept here. If my y-intercept was 5, what's the reciprocal of 5? One over five. So I, I, one over five is smaller, so I put it down lower, like so. 
Is that making sense? Yeah. Now, this part is where you kind of have to wrap your bean around this here. Um, you got to say wrap your bean. Bake your bean. Sizzle your bacon. Bake your noodle. Bake your noodle. I don't know. Can I just make up my own things? And trademark that? Wrap your bean. True story. I'm like, all right, I, I, I don't want that one. Now, if we look at my graph here, what happens is I move closer. On this side of my cow fence, what happens to my uh, y values? The curves. They get smaller, right? What's the reciprocal of smaller numbers? Bigger. They get bigger. So this graph now is going to be like this. And then it's going to come through here. What's the odds? Oh, I, I just drew some points. It's going to be like this. Do you just want to estimate that, please? These here? Yeah, these are sketches. I just need you to label these two points, the asymptote and the intercepts. So those are your two intercepts. Yeah, and now this guy, it's not going to cross the x-axis here. These points that were, as they get closer, are getting bigger, so they're actually going to get smaller. And these points will be over here, so it does something like this. Okay. So like on the curves part, you don't actually have to label. Curve you mean? No, no yeah. points. No. Okay, done. Okay. Looks like a catch. Curve catch. It does that. It just comes towards and swoops away. It comes towards and swoops away. It makes the same shape every time. Like the ocean currents. Right, because the cow fence is there. The only time it changes is if you have a graph that's doing this. Like this is a positive graph, right? If I was drawing, let's say, a negative one, my fence is here now, and then I'm going to have a swoop here and a swoop there. Like that. Because it's yeah, negative my, my slope's negative, right? So my graph runs this way. So it just changes like the quadrants. Okay. Okay. Kind of stuff. How are we doing for time? Okay, I want you guys to try some of the no, linear ones whoa. today. We can't. We got like three minutes left. We got lots of time. No time. We got five minutes plus one. Um, we could do a quadratic one real quick. They look pretty cool. I always like them. Um, come on, Brooke. Smile a little bit. Um, let's grab this guy here. Now, what's nice about these guys, or at least from what, what I will do to you guys on the test, oh, they don't. We're not doing that one today. Oh, it's fine. Okay, so, um, for what I want you guys to do, remember, x and y intercepts, asymptotes, the new y intercepts, right? Easy peasy. Um, oh, and with quadratics, I want to know where the vertex will be. Easy peasy. Well, I'm just going to use these. That's right. All right. So if we look here at the, let's graph the original function, okay? I do. Sorry, what is this? Are we going back to the original function? Yeah. No, this is the same stuff. Yeah, this is another new example. Um, so this guy here, x squared minus 4. That's our good old friend, a difference of square. X plus 2. Okay. So my x-intercepts are at 2 and negative 2. Okay. And where's my y-intercept going to be? What's my c value? There, so you're basically done the question all my pretty much like um, <laughs> yeah. you, you just stir in the pot, hey? He clearly has his iPad playing plans. Knock it off. I just turned on like a minute ago. I should watch me, so I'll see um, 
So if we were to find um, the vertex, it's going to be halfway between negative 2 and positive 2, right? Oh, yeah. Zero. So my vertex is actually right here. Good. See, look at all this stuff that we learned in quadratics. It's paying off. No. We're using it. We're applying it. So where's your cow fence? Well, hold on. Cow fence comes into play. Let's draw the original quadratic first. So it's going to do something like this. It opens upwards, right? My A value is positive. So my, I know my original does this. That's my original. <coughs> What's that? My vertex is at 4 and 0 now. Because it splits it right in half, right? I knew it was at 0, and I knew my y-intercept's also at, at 0. So This one worked out nicely. Difference of squares always graph like this, actually. They always make a graph. And it just depends on what your or this value is below it. Do something. <laughs> really? I'm going to hit you. You had to look like this. <laughs> Um, Whoa, you said that in the mic. It's all right. It didn't hear. Um, so, here, I'm going to go back and watch the um, So, if I graph this guy now, 26 minutes to say that. If I graph this now, um, these guys become my asymptotes, right? So, I have two asymptotes with quadratics. Two x intercepts. So, does it make like a double? Two. So, now. We'll do the outside parts first. See how the graph is like heading downwards towards the asymptote? Now it does this. Okay. This one does that. That's it. Well, I got the middle part now. What do you mean, why? Now, that tends to be the trickiest part. You have to remember. Okay, if my y values are getting smaller and smaller this way, technically, then when I go this way, they're going to get bigger and bigger. Okay? It's just that weird reciprocal part that you got to remember. All right, we got one minute, so I'm going to quickly finish. If my y intercept here was at 4, what's it going to be at when I take the reciprocal? 1 over 4. 1 over 4. So up here. So because my values were getting bigger here, they're actually going to start to get smaller on this side. And they're going to get smaller on this side, so my graph does this. There it is. Boom. Okay, I'll put up a video with a little bit more information. I'll do another example tomorrow. Um, and I'll put up the assignment for you guys to work on tomorrow, okay? So finish 7.3 number 6, and then some stuff from 7.4 tomorrow. Try it tomorrow. I know there will be questions on Monday. We'll go over it then. Okay.